Jedi and warriors take the field in an epic battle that is larger than life. It is called Texas High School Football. Only one show can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state into focus. Lone Star Gridiron. First meeting between Lake Travis and Cibolo Steel in the regular season. The Cavaliers won the other two meetings in the playoffs and went on to win the state title both times. Perhaps one of these teams would find a win at the end of the rainbow. Early on, it was Steele's tackling that hindered their chances. Lake Travis quarterback Charlie Brewer with the short pass to Garrett Wilson. And look at him go. Yes, he was touched, but just not tackled. Wilson scoots down the sideline 79 yards for the first of 15 touchdowns the teams would combine to score. 7-0 Cavaliers early. Things would get worse for Steele. Ensuing drive, quarterback Xavier Martin loses the handle and Cade Langston would recover for Lake Travis at the Knights 15. Brewer would eventually score from a yard out and it was 14-0 Cavs. Later in the first quarter, Brewer with the pass to Malik Barkley and some poor tackling once again for Steele. It ends up a 76-yard touchdown pass play. 21-7, Lake Travis after one. Brewer threw for nearly 200 yards in the quarter alone. Early second quarter now, Steele driving, but Martin in trouble, runs 20 yards into the backfield, turns to his left, runs, eludes tacklers, and turns a big loss into a 14-yard gain. Steele would score on a one-yard TD run, and it was 21-14. Next Cavalier drive, Brewer drives them down to the 12, gets Steele to jump off sides, and on the free play, tosses a touchdown pass to a wide open Cade Green, 28 to 14. Three throwing and one rushing touchdown for the SMU commit in the first half. Martin doing his best to stay with Brewer. Here he runs for a touchdown, 28-21 at that point. Steele finally gets a break defensively at midfield. Barkley can't get a handle on the pitch. Juan Henry kicks the football. I mean football, and recovers it going out of bounds. Ensuing possession, Martin tosses to the back corner of the end zone where Caden Stearns goes parallel to the ground and makes the catch. Stearns had trouble tackling on defense, but not catching touchdowns on offense. A little love to the ball boy, and it's 28-28 going into halftime. Early third, Steele takes their first lead of the game. Brendan Brady, eight yards for the touchdown run, 35-28 Steele, but the lead was short-lived. Steele did have a chance to get off the field, fourth and one for LT at the Steele 20. Coach Hank Carter passes on a Cameron Dicker field goal attempt, and instead, Brewer rushes for the first down. Lake Travis would score a touchdown on the next play to get within one, but Carter goes for two off the swinging gate. And it works as the Cavs regain the lead 36 to 35. Here is how the play broke down. The Cavaliers line up the swinging gate left with six on the top. Steel players are confused as some are looking at Brewer, but others are looking straight ahead. Malik Barkley goes in motion, which further confuses Steel. With only five defenders on the bottom, Brewer takes the snap, takes a step to the right, then quickly goes upfield. The two blockers for Lake Travis hold their blocks, leaving only Caden Stearns with a chance to make the tackle. Brewer too quick though, and he ends up in the end zone for the two-point conversion. Dicker would kick a field goal at the end of the third. It was 39-35 LT. Dicker would play a larger role later on, but it would be a familiar connection to start the fourth for Steele. Martin to Stearns for the third time in the game. This one six yards out, 42-39 Steele with 10 minutes remaining. By the way, all connections are toll free. Fast forward to under three minutes left in the fourth. Teams exchange touchdowns like Christmas gifts to make it 49-46. Incomplete pass by Brewer, but what you don't see is Brewer hit hard as he released the ball and he was knocked out of the game after throwing for 359 yards and four touchdowns and run for another. The game took so long that some of the Shirts Clemens players showed up after their game. Of course, this was their home stadium. Clemens would see an unlikely hero come out in Lake Travis backup quarterback, Matthew Baldwin. Fourth and 12 for LT at their own 33. Baldwin can't find anyone open, decides toll-free dialing is great, dials his own number, 
and keeps the phone. I mean the ball. Confusing reference to a phone, yes, but Steele was more confused on the play as Baldwin kept it for 17 yards to keep the game going. Seven seconds left, Dicker on to try a 46-yard field goal to keep the proceedings going, right? Down, Shirts Parkway, 49-49, and it's time for bonus football. Steel ball first, Brady, 13-yard touchdown run as he barely gets across the goal line, and it's a TD. Lake Travis possession was one play as Baldwin threw a short slant to Cade Brewer, who took it in for a score, and it is time for even more bonus football. Dicker with a 29-yard field goal, giving Lake Travis the lead, 59-56, his third of the game. Dicker and steel kicker Matthew O'Brien combined to go 18 for 18 on PATs and field goal attempts. Steele now with the ball, facing fourth and one at the two. Knights pass on the game time field goal and go for the win, or at least the first down. They get neither. Martin rolls out right. The pass was low and away from Rashad Beecham. He can't hang on to the pointly object, and that's it. Lake Travis celebrates. Steele agonizes as Lake Travis wins it 59 to 56 in a game that took four hours to play. Check out the final tale of the tape. The teams combined for almost 1,200 yards of total offense. There were only four three and outs in the game. Lake Travis had three receivers with at least 100 yards receiving, and Steele had two rushers go over 160 yards. By the way, it's the first home loss for the Knights since August of 2013. With your Lone Star Gridiron.com report, I'm Jeff Power in San Antonio. LoneStarGridiron.com. Access the complete history of Texas high school football, over 100 years of information, win-loss records, coaching histories, individual stats, records, and more. Lone Star Gridiron, the authority on Texas high school football.